Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and tonight we're going to be talking about what happens to men that who stay bachelors forever. Now, technically, a bachelor is a guy that never got married. Now, of course, I've been married before, yet here I have a channel called Better Bachelor. Well, uh, I'm giving myself a pass on that one because that's the best name I could think of for the channel. And I'm I'm a bachelor now. As far as I know, I'm never getting married again. Uh, but traditionally, bachelors are guys that have never been married, uh, which is really most of you. So I guess when I say let's be better bachelors, I'm talking about you guys as well. Um, so I, I did a I read a study. I think it was about six months ago, eight months ago. And it was about guys. Are they happier single versus married? Um, but what that didn't take into account is once a man is divorced and he's single, is he happy? And obviously, there's going to be a difference between a man that's never been married, never had kids, doing his own thing, versus a guy who was married, maybe has kids, who got divorced, maybe lost his kids to custody to her, maybe she took him for half of everything. If you ask that guy, hey, are you happy? Odds are his answer is going to be no. But it's not because he's single now, it's because what happened to him. And he, if you were to ask him, were you happy or married or single? <clears throat> he might say, well, I was happier married before she cheated on me, before she left me, before she took half my money, before she took the kids away from me, you know, that kind of thing. So we got a, a, a new study that's just only about bachelors, and they give you some pros and some cons, but I think the cons, the negatives, aren't really negatives, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. First, some losses. Um, this is a screenshot I, I found on uh, Twitter. And if you're just listening, it is a Ford uh, S SUV. And on the back window, it says OnlyFans in their logo. And OnlyFans.com forward slash and then the woman's name. Uh, so now people are so not worried about knowing that their spicy content is out there. They literally advertise it on their vehicles. Bravo. What a brave new world we live in. Good thing we don't have anything like morality or decency anymore. That's so crazy. That's so last year. Um, the interesting thing is in the lower left of the window, a lot of times people will put the family stickers on there. Well, there is a dude, and there is the woman, and there is a kid, and a kid, and a baby, and two dogs. So this wife slash girlfriend and mother to three is an OnlyFans model. Good luck to her. And I was going to talk about this. I did want to talk about this, but it's not, it doesn't get its own. Like, I, I'm not going to do a full video about this because I'll be honest with you, like the videos that I do that are crazy, I always get the most views on them, um, which is nice. I mean, as a content creator, the more views we get, the more ad revenue we get and the more eyes on our product and the more my channel gets out there. But, you know, the sensationalism isn't really like it gets kind of old. I'll, I'm, I'm sure I'll go back and, and talk about this stuff at some point, but. It says, only ma'ams, my teen, and this is from the Irish son, only ma'ams, my teen son signed me up for OnlyFans so he could get more pocket money. He's fully supportive of my career. So basically her son is pimping her out <laughs> to OnlyFans by setting up an account for her so she can make money. Now, the truth of it is, I'm pretty sure she made the OnlyFans account and then said that he did it as some sort of weird virtue signal because people do this. But um, it's a quick read. It says, for most teens, the thought of their mom posing in spicy photos is enough to make their skin crawl. But that's not the case for Leonardo Hathaway, age 19. In fact, Leo signed his mom, Lucine Duarte, up for the spicy site OnlyFans in the hope to earn himself a little extra pocket money. So he's basically, like I said, he, he I, I hope he has the big pimp hand because mom is going to be making him money apparently. Now, I believe she used to do spicy videos, so she's kind of already been in this trade. It says Lucine has already put there. It is Lucine has already posed uh, in in uh, with no clothes in several men's magazines, and Leo says that he's more than supportive of her career. We have an incredible relationship between mother and child. I have to support her choices just as she supports mine, says Leonardo. When asked if I support her, I always ask back, why shouldn't I? The son opened an account at OnlyFans for his own mom in order to help with expenses and pocket money. Now, 
this is creepy. This is weird. This is creepy. Just this photo, knowing that this is son and mom, that that just makes my skin crawl a little bit. Like, it's just, it makes me uncomfortable. There's way too much familiarity there. Now, now my family is not the big hug, kiss, super, like, interactive. That's not how my family is. So maybe if your family's like this, it's no big deal. But to me, that just, that to me looks like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a cover, not of a, the cover of a like Fifty Shades book or some, you know, romance book that that women would read. That reminds me of some woman doing that to Fabio while his hair is blowing in the breeze, and it just is very creepy. Um, here's her spread that she used to have in Playboy, and it looks like that was in. Uh, I can't. I don't know what language that is, but I think that's Italian, maybe. Uh, blokes can subscribe to her account, paying a fee each month. Obviously, du Le, uh, Lou Duarte is no stranger to showing off her body. She won Miss Bum Bum World Contest in 2019, starred in a photo shoot for Playboy Port Portugal. Portugal, there you go. And no wonder I couldn't pick out the Spanish. Uh, and then posed for Australia's For Him, or FHM, uh, magazine. She recently starred in the issue of Harper's Bazaar Vietnam. So... There you go. Uh, not only are kids okay, not only are women okay putting it on the bumpers that are their back windows of their cars in foot-high letters uh, and, and bragging about it around town, but now, like, kids are signing their moms up so the kid can get pocket money. I, I just... Good times make bad... make weak people. That's all I got to say to that. Good times make weak people. All right. Um, on to the main story. Uh, oh, I didn't bring, drag in my profiles of the day. Let me do that before I forget. Oh, for heaven's sakes, because if I don't have them in my tabs, I'll forget. Okay, there we go. All right. What happens to men who stay bachelors forever according to science? And this is from fatherly.com. Uh, men who never marry or have kids might not be as lonely as they seem. So again, that kind of correlates with the other one article that I did that single guys, you know, usually are doing pretty good. There's no perfect time to get married. Let me zoom this up so you guys can see it a little better. There's no perfect time to get married or to have kids, but when men follow through with both, it changes their lives forever. And conversely, men who never marry or have families are, launch, are launched on a vastly different life trajectory. Society tends to teach us that remaining single is the territory of best friends in rom-coms and those with intimacy issues. But this is, of course, far from the truth. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you, you might have some, in, uh, some people may have some intimacy issues. And obviously, you should not be romantic with your best friends or friends if they're of the opposite gender than you are. It says, in fact, new research shows that single and never married men lead healthy, fulfilling lives that are full of friends, sensitivity, and resilience. Something that flies in the face of research that holds up marriage and family as the best and healthiest life destination for men. According to recent scientific studies, men who never get married, okay, so this is the important part here. According to recent scientific studies, men who never get married may gain strength from solitude and have more extensive social networks and a deeper connection to work, but they're differently vulnerable to some of life's triv uh, travails too. Um, I can attest for this much that I do have friends, um, they're long distance. Like one is in California, one's in North Carolina, one's in New York. We don't keep in touch that often. Um, but when we talk, it's very much a how you been, what's new. And in three minutes, we can explain everything that we've been up to and then just kind of talk about other things. There's not a lot of necessity for daily or weekly or even monthly updates with somebody that, that's kind of like a friend like that. Not only that, but uh, I mean, two of the guys are married. Another one's a bachelor like myself. And we've just got stuff going on. You know, I don't sit and, and, and chat on the phone all day. I do text back and forth with family and friends and things like that. That's mostly how I keep in touch because I'm not very good at sitting down and talking on the phone for extended periods of time because really this is about all the talking I do during my day. It's why I do my videos. If I didn't, I'd probably go crazy and talk to myself. Uh, but the solitude portion of it is really important to me. I like to sit and think, and I like to sit and read, and I like to sit and watch movies and do games and build things. And that just for me is my mental well-being place. Listening to someone talk or listening to someone explain about their day or listening about just, just that I just don't have the patience for that. So I can say that I, and, and I do think you gain strength from it as well. 
and that you don't need validation. You don't need attention from other people. You can just be happy doing your own thing. And if the world collapsed outside, you'd definitely be lonely. It definitely takes some time to get adjusted, but you're not going to fall apart like a lot of people would. They see single men are rich in friendship. Single men are not necessarily isolated basement dwellers. In fact, they're significantly more likely than married men to have several close friends. One in eight men reports having no friends at all, and lots of those men are married with kids. Despite the research that shows that friendships help people live longer lives, stave off cognitive de decline, and increase general well-being, guy friends are a, a precious public health commodity that single men have covered. Right. So we know, usually in a relationship, women do not... Now, my mom has hobbies, and older women that I know in my family, they seem to have hobbies. Whether it's knitting, whether it's reading, my mom does sewing, she likes cooking. She definitely has her hobbies. As a matter of fact, I've seen mom and dad go a day without really saying much because dad's watching the news and relaxing. She's on her iPad, you know, playing a game or looking up a sewing pattern or something like that. They're just comfortable to be in the room with each other. But it's because she has hobbies. Young people today, and especially young women today, I don't think have enough hobbies. And so you, as the boyfriend or the husband or whoever, all of a sudden are becoming entertainment director. Excuse me, I'm bored. Entertain me. Hey, can let's go to the movies. Oh, you'll have to pay, by the way. Hey, let's go down and, and grab a drink and maybe watch de uh, get a bite to eat. You're paying. Let's go play putt-putt golf. Let's go on vacation. All of these are things you have to pay for. Not only that, you have to leave your house. I, I rarely, and there are women out there that do this, so I don't want to pretend like they don't exist, but rare is it that you have a girlfriend or wife that's like, hey, let's play a video game or let's, um, let, let's do something that you enjoy that's here, that's around the house. And usually guys are pretty good at finding ways to, uh, we're just not as social as women are, so we find ways to occupy our, our time. Women, they, they, again, usually crave social interactions. It's scientifically proven. And when they don't have that social interactions, a lot of times they're bored. So that's why they're always hitting up people on their phone and they're on social media and they're on the dating apps and they're always going, going, going with a the phone. They can't just put them, put them down and leave it alone. But the important thing here is that, again, some of you guys may be in a place where you say, man, I don't have a lot of friends right now or, or there is no one I meet. Look, you can meet people on forums. If you're a Corvette guy, go to Corvette forums. Spend some time there. We've, I've got uh, on betterbachelor.locals.com, my forums. There are There's a, a men and women over there, and the women that are there are very supportive of the men's community. That's why they're there. They're making friendships. They're sharing recipes for some really like spiced beef jerky. I don't know how to make beef jerky. And uh, spicy mayonnaise was one I saw there. I don't know how to make mayonnaise. I think it's awesome. But but the, the point is, though, that these people, when they don't hear from somebody for a while and then somebody makes a post, a post they, they're responded to with, hey, I haven't heard from you. Glad you're okay. What's new? Or how's your vacation? Or people get to know each other. You don't have to sit face to face. So forums are good for that. And if it's Corvettes or bodybuilding or whatever you're into, not Reddit. Reddit is a trash heap. I mean, a legit forum where they only talk about one particular topic. Um, I'm on RV forums and we talk about different stuff and pl good places to camp on the road. Um, and again, your hobbies. Uh, if you're into video games and you're playing MMOs or something like that with some group of friends that you knew back in school, or it takes work. It's not friends just don't fall out of trees and land on you and all of a sudden you've got best friend. You do have to work on it. You do have to put effort into it. But most of the time, once you've established that connection, you keep them. And oftentimes for a very long time, men to reconnect or to keep friends is very low energy. It doesn't really require much. And if you differ on different things like politics or on um, the way that you look at the world and they don't become your friend anymore, then they weren't really your friend to begin with. You need to find like-minded people or at least people civil enough that if you have different views on things that you get along about it and you go, ah, we just, we differ on that, but uh, life goes on. Uh, they say they're poor in money. What single men gain in friends, they lose in money. Studies show men who stay unmarried make anywhere from 10 to 40% less than married men. There's evidence that fathers make up 21% more than men without children, though studies also suggest men with wives and kids work longer hours and put up with more workplace BS than single men. 
Now, this does not mean marriage and parenthood cause financial success, though anecdotally, that sure doesn't sound right. Uh, indeed, other research argues that men are simply more likely to get married and have kids when their income is already rising. Either way, your unmarried, childless bachelor friends are probably making less money than you are. That may be true statistically speaking. However, I talked about this in the other video, but I want to re re uh, where I was talking about single guys, but I, but I want to retouch on this again because it is important. If you take a man that is married and he makes $100,000 a year, well, he's got the house that he has to pay for, and it's got to be big enough for a wife, and the wife is happy, and the wife wants to remodel it, and the wife wants her decorations, and the wife wants new carpeting, and the wife wants new countertops, and the wife wants to hire a maid, and you've got to have two bedrooms, each one for the kids, and the kids are going to want to fill those with toys, and they're going to need their video games, and they want a TV in their room, and they want a phone, and they want an iPad, and they want, and they want, and they want. That Oh, and let me not forget this. You you have your everyday driving car. The wife has her everyday driving car. And and maybe you want something like a hobby, like a mo motorcycle or something like that. All that all that costs money. And you need that bigger house to, to have enough room for everybody. That all costs money. But what if you were a guy making 50 grand? And now I'm the extreme, but I'll, I'll use this as an example. I'm the extreme. What if you're a guy that makes 50 grand and just has a small little place that's got enough room for a bed and a bathroom and a little kitchen and you don't need a lot of lounge room and, and maybe you're in a, an apartment or a flat that's near a heart of a city and you spend most of your time out at the gym and going jogging and in the park and going to a pub with friends. You only need a tiny little place that may cost you nothing in comparison to that big house. Not only that, you don't need two vehicles. You can have two vehicles if you want them. You can have your main everyday driver and a fun one, but maybe you only have one vehicle. You don't have to get the new wife or the the new wife. You don't have to get the car, a new wife, when she starts complaining that, that the, the other car is older or I'm tired of it or I backed up into something, right? And you don't, so yes, they may make less, but if any of you have been married or in relationships like I've been, they're expensive. They're really expensive. And I got bad news for you. Even if, if that wife, even if you do make more and that wife does cost you, maybe you're coming in at the end of the day, maybe your fun money is the same as a single guy. I would, I would go forth to say that it's less because there's not college tuitions you need to save up for. There's a whole bunch of things that those costs. So even though a single man may make less money on paper, I would say he's got a lot more money in the long run because he only buys what he wants. He invests it the way he wants it. That's kind of my take on that. So I just know I've always had more money when I was single. Single men commit more crimes. Okay. Uh, they say marriage reduces the likelihood that men will commit crimes. Studies suggest the data um, indicates that becoming a father quells criminal impulses even further. In societies with a disproportionate number of single men who cannot marry or have kids, either as a result of a polygamy or uneven sex ratios, we tend to see higher crime rates, higher rates of extremism, and more time at war across the board. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe people can, can go to the dark side a little bit more if they don't have a kid and wife looking out for them. I don't have any statistics. On, I mean, I don't have any life experiences on that. Uh, but bachelors are more sensitive to feelings of judgment and regret. When men cannot have their own biological children due to fertility problems, or if you're just like me and choose not to have them, studies suggest they may experience a period of bereavement and regret. And when they can't have kids because they can't find partners, they're more likely to be judged by others and more likely to lash out. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there are members of either the guys go in their own way, the red pill community, um, the incelibate uh, group they can be very angry. I mean, we call it the red pill rage for a reason. Um, you can very much go through a hard point in life. The The good news is, though, it's hard to hold on to that anger for forever. It's exhausting. And it doesn't really, it doesn't benefit you. It doesn't get you anywhere. Um, now, it, it does. it's great motivation to find your new track in life and to improve your yourself and, and to go maybe hit the gym. But that will wane. That will go away after time. And once you kind of do that breakthrough, you come out on the other side as more logical, more understanding of, of the issues that other men have, other people have. And I think you can be more empathic to other people's problems. They say um, the uh, perception of being 
judged for the inability to marry and have kids, has stoked the risk of dangerous groups of extremists who refer to themselves as involuntary celibates or incels, a number of whom have orchestrated um, hurting people in large gatherings. Married dads are far less likely to feel disenfranchised, at least in this way. Um, that one line, I think there was one or two instances uh, recently in the last year. But you have to remember that there are 30 or I think the number was almost 30 percent of men under the age of 30 who have not had a girlfriend and who have not physically been with a woman. So when you have that large a group of men uh, that are involuntarily celibate or not having girlfriends, to call a couple of guys that have gone out and done some bad things to say that that's the whole culture is completely BS. And, and that's completely wrong. You know, it's the same thing when a, when a mother goes out and does something bad to her kids and you say, oh, well, must be all, all moms are crazy. No, it doesn't work like that. Same thing with this. Yes, these guys can, can really follow down some dark rabbit holes and get in some bad places and kind of get hyped up on that stuff. Um, but way, way, way more find positive content and ways to go, hey, you know what? There's a lot of other people in this. I'm not the only one that's having problems. I will find my way out of this. Oh, um, I'll give you guys a bus update at the end of this. I almost forgot. I'll give you a transmission update now that I'm thinking about it. If you didn't see my last video about the bus uh, or about last night's video, transmission issues. Uh, being single doesn't necessarily mean being lonely. This is the important one for, I think, a lot of you guys. The good news for bachelors is that scientists are starting to suspect they've underestimated the upsides of being alone. Despite warning of a despite warnings of a loneliness epidemic, single men without children report deeper connections to friends, parents, and other family members as well as to their work. Single people have a heightened sense of self-determination and are more likely to continue growing as people. One uh, one study found bachelors may also demonstrate more emotional self-sufficiency, especially when it comes to dealing with negative emotions. Right. So when you're by yourself all the time and you don't have anybody to yell at, no one to lash at, and no one that's giving you a hard time, you kind of have to sit and stew on your bad on, on your bad thoughts and work your way through them. And at first, again, it's very hard, but I think over time men learn how to handle, like, you know, my, my transition, transmissions got problems. I'm literally sitting in a, in a, um, a truck repair station and they can't work on it till Monday. They ran some sensors. Well, I'll just tell you what happened. They, the guy and I crawled underneath it. He found one of the sensors on the side of, I've got an, it's a D, is it the DT 466 engine? I, man, I hope I'm getting that right. Um, it's a DT 466 engine, uh, uh and four, 466. Anyway, good engine. And it's got a, it's an Allison transmission, uh, Allison, uh, model or, uh, 3000 generation. I'm just not, I, I, I know a little bit about them, but I really don't. But I looked them both up. They're both supposed to be really good. Anyway, uh, one of the sensor plugs got coated in oil. It went into limp mode. He cleaned off the sensor, popped it back in. That didn't fix the problem. So the oil may have wicked up the wires. Also, he found between up near the front of the engine, there's an oil leak that's kind of blowing back and drifting along the bottom of the engine and the transmission. And so that's got to be uh, fixed. And it, it kind of ticks me off because I had a guy give me the once over on the bus and, and, a, and a, a repair guy, and he didn't point any of that out and said everything was fine. He didn't charge me very much, but I rather would have, he would have charged me the proper amount and actually fixed it rather than going, no, you're good, buddy, and off you go. So I, at least there's a sensor. I think they're going to drop the pan and they've got some other stuff. To, so um, I'm, I'm going to be here for a few days. Uh, also, Sorry, my my train of thought is jumping from train to train. For those of you that have joined over on betterbachelor.locals or donated over there, for those of you that reached out to me on PayPal, some of like all of you dug very deep into your pockets to help me and and all of you were like, "Hey man, for your transmission, I know it's expensive. I you know, it's 100 bucks an hour for anybody to work on that thing." Like, here's some here's some fundage. You guys are rock stars, and I really appreciate it. You know, I I never uh, I never, I always say just donate, you know, but I'm never sitting here going, please, please send me money. Um, and, and you guys just blow me away with your kindness and your, your, your giving. And, and I really appreciate that. So I wanted to take a moment and specifically say to all of you that have, thank you so much. It really means, it really means a lot to me from the bottom of my heart. Um, 
Okay, so, and that's my engine update. And so I'm, I'm here for a couple of days. But anyway, you can spend time alone. You know, I'm, I'm going to be here in the middle of a, a, a lot by myself for today and tomorrow until they show up Monday morning. I'm happy. I got the bus. I got things to do. I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of bummed I'm not driving right now because I wanted to keep moving. I'm only day two on the trip. But it is what it is. And, and I think as guys stay alone and have to deal with problems in their life and they have to go through hard times by themselves, um, I, th- I think that, I think that that makes them grow. They can't just keep reaching out for help and, and virtue signaling or, or crying to somebody and, and like that kid that opened an OnlyFans for his mom because he wants to get more money. Like you don't have it, you have to become very self sufficient. I think that makes you strong. Something else that I, w- I can attest to is my relationship with my friends and especially my parents and other family members got much stronger the moment I didn't have the noise of a relationship in my life. Um, and not saying that all relationships are noise, but they're, they take your energy. When you don't have that, that my, my relationship with my mother and my father got much stronger. And now instead of pouring my energy into a relationship, I pour it into my family, into my friends and into my loved ones. And, and I, I, so I, I can attest that, that I feel that much, much more as a single guy. They say, but it still isn't entirely clear what it does mean for the individuals. The preoccupation with the perils of loneliness can obscure the profound benefits of solitude, Bella DePaolo, a scientist at the University of California, Santa Barbara, told the American Psychological Association. It is time for a more accurate portrayal of single people in single life, one that recognizes the real strengths and resilience of people who are single and what makes their lives so meaningful. And then they have some other articles here. So I, I, I won't bother re- leaving a link below because I've read the whole thing and they, I don't see, I mean, that maybe they do have links to the, eat. well, I will leave it because they do have some links to, I guess, some of the, the studies here if you guys wanted to look further into that. Um, but, but there's the good news is, I, you know, as much as you guys, and I know some of you guys are in bad spots, um, I've been in that bad spot where you're like the whole, you know, especially when you're fresh out of a breakup and you feel that hole in your chest that's about this big that you feel like you could drive a train through that you're just heartbroken and you're miserable and you're alone and you're angry and you're frustrated and you're hating yourself and you're, we've all been there. All of us have been there. If you've been in a relationship or even had a friend that passed away or something like that, the feeling is very similar. That goes away. And then with a little bit of effort and you go out there and you put some work into it, you can make some friendships and you can become good on your own two feet. But it is, you do have to have community. You know, being a man completely on, on uh, your own, that's pretty tough. And, and if you were just to fly off into the woods for 30 years and, and be, uh, like, was it, um, oh, I forget the, the gentleman that did that up in, in Alaska. You can do it, but that's not for everybody. I mean, it wouldn't be for me. But it doesn't mean that that you can't keep people in your lives and still be okay alone and and just finding a balance. But you do have to put work into it. And if you're feeling really alone and you say, hey, I'm I'm feeling pretty low here, put some energy into going out and finding friends. And and even if it's on forums, even if it's on the other end of the Internet and put some effort into going to the gym. It, it is there are studies after studies that show that physical exercise and physical exertion definitely help with being depressed or being bummed out and having bad feelings won't happen overnight for you. You know, it takes 30 days for anything to become a habit. So you, you just need to get at it and make it happen for you. And I think you'll have some good results. All right, let's move on to the dating profile of the day. Oh, uh, this third this first one was quite interesting. Um, you know, I, I can imagine dating this woman. It would be like a job interview. No romance, all business. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about as I read this. Uh, she's 38. She's never been married. She's 5'5". Five five. She's athletic and fit. And she has no children. So, I mean, you say, okay, she's never been married. That's, that's a good. She's athletic and fit, which is good. She's never had kids, which is good. 38. Never married. Okay, that's that's up there. That, I mean, that's, that's a pretty... That's never been married. That's a pretty long time. She says, quick facts about me. I'm a Chinese living in the USA. Expectation for a potential Mr. Right that fits the position based on a job requirement. Commitment to supporting all aspects of our relationship, including extracurricular activities. Have a clear future family plan vision based on evidence and action. Be absolutely passionate about improving our quality dating and caring 
each a determined advocate for family plan practice. Be family focused. Building a future is the at the heart of everything we do. Intrinsically motivated and inspired to create a world class loving environment. Action and outcome focused. Excellent communication and interpersonal skills. Show experienced dating entrepreneurship, solve problems and innovate. Professional generosity to develop others. Marriage time effectively and prioritize. Rise to challenges and be flexible. Resilience. Culturally respectful. Community, family minded. Guys, I, I can't make this up. I cannot make this up. This sounds like resume buzzwords and in a lot of resumes, I've written a lot of resumes. I've changed jobs several times because I tend to get bored easily. I, you're always looking for those buzzwordy resume words instead of saying, I'm good at math. It's like, uh, 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 shows exceptional skill in problem related solving of mathematical equations for business development. <laughs> that's, that's the world of resume. That is this dating application. You show up to this, and if, if her dating her is anything like this, I can only see it being like a, excuse me, darling, would you, tonight could we perhaps schedule an hour and 15 minutes for procreation? Well, I'm sorry, we won't actually be procreating, just fornication, shall we? Well, let me check my schedule, dear. Well, I see I have 40 minutes before one of my TV shows. Let's, let us engage in this most quickly. Who wants to date that? No wonder she's 38, never been married, never had kids, probably never had a boyfriend. With that kind of attitude, it's like, it's it's all about business, man. Forget it. All right, and this last one here, uh, she's 28. She's a verified user, so she is serious. She is a nursing assistant. Uh, she says, I'm 28 years young. Mom to five. Now, this is the important bit I want you to remember. I want you to remember these three words. Mom to five. Moving on. No time for what are you doing messages. I want a full conversation. My time is very valuable. Just because I have children does not mean my legs stay open like a convenience store. If your only interest is screwing me, I'm the wrong one. Now, here's why I told you to remember that sentence, mom to five. Her second to last sentence of the dating app says, saving myself for my future husband. Feel free to message me first. So this young lass, 28 year old lass, who has five children, is saving herself for her husband. Now, I ask you, what, what is she saving for her husband? Because she's had five kids, who knows how many different relationships how many men have visited her bedroom to help create those five different kids, yet she's saving something for her husband? Now, if you wanted to say, I'm born again vir virgin, and uh, I'm not sleeping with you until we're married, um, good luck to you, and that's certainly your right. But to say you're saving anything for your husband, there's, there's not anything left for you to give him where no man has not been before. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. And you guys really have. And I appreciate that so, so much. Uh, join me over on betterbachelors.locals.com. It really is a great forum. Like, uh, and it, people are getting to know each other. You do recognize names. You do recognize faces. You do get to know people over there. And the more that you interact with a community, the more people will interact with you and the more you know, acquaintances or friends that you may make over there. But we've also got dudes talking about music and memes and cooking and camping and just come on over and check it out. It's free. If you want to just uh, 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 subscribe, it's free. And if you want to become a member and support me as well, uh, then you will get some additional content as I get ready to put publish it out, uh, which I will be because I'm just sitting here for the next couple of days. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, um, it's okay to be alone. It's okay to even feel lonely. But if you do it right, 
if you get yourself in with the community, if you get yourself in a good mental health place, you're going to be okay being alone. It doesn't mean you have to be friendless, but science is saying that if in the long haul, if you stick with it, you're probably going to be happier than if you just got married or had kids. 